It's not just the size of your concoctions, it's how you use them. Pocket Train was able to reach rank 1 legend with the most popular version of Miracle Concoction Rogue, and that is actually Casey's version that was popularized over this last week. I think it's safe to say that Wicked Stabs and Tooth and Nefarian and like all these burst cards that aren't concoctions have no place in this deck, because with how consistent you can get the right concoction at the right time, I really don't think we need these random burst tools because we already have plenty of ways of summoning big minions, summoning wide boards, and already dealing a large amount of burst damage because this deck is is just extremely versatile. I will highlight one other deck that is worth playing though that was also made by Casey. He was trying to make a rogue deck that was able to beat other rogue decks and he decided to put Vanessa Van Cleef in this deck. Now granted the clips coming up ahead have no clips with Vanessa Van Cleef. I'm more so just highlighting this deck and its success because the guy who created the deck that we're all playing right now is trying to literally counter that deck with a different version of the same deck. So like Concoction Rogue has like this weird back and forth especially in the mirror that you will be seeing a lot on ladder it has this weird back and forth that unfortunately it's not about who summons the bigger ghosts it's not about who summons the wider board it's about who can answer the most amount of threats so a lot of these mirrors can come down to who can get the the, the the deal damage who can get the destroy minions or sometimes whoever can just get the most amount of burst all at once because if you can do your combo by turn four or turn five it's really hard to have the concoctions already built up by that point unless you're both playing potion belt as early as possible and in one of the clips coming up ahead you'll see what happens happens when one rogue has the concoctions and the other one doesn't. Spoiler alert, doesn't go very well for the rogue that doesn't have them. But in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video coming up ahead. This was all recorded in my spare time, but did not do this on stream. So this is a YouTube exclusive. So if you like that kind of content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel in order to not only support us, but also let us know that you want more content exactly like this. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this intro. And we'll see you in the next video. All right, so recording some special YouTube content today. This is only available for YouTube. This is not a Twitch stream. This is uh, just a couple of games that I'm recording with the new Rank 1 Concoction Rogue. Uh, there's not too many differences in this list from the uh, from the previous list that's already been extremely popular. In fact, I'll go ahead and have the two lists up here so you can see exactly what's different because I know things are slightly different since we have one door shadows and I know the other list played two. But there's also one other card that I want to point out before I start playing the uh, the deck. Uh, there's Vanessa Van Cleet. There's a lot of discussion around this card right now and it's actually, it might be the, the, the card to play if you're seeing a lot of rogues and if you're in top 1000 legend you are definitely seeing a lot of rogue. So Vanessa might be worth putting into your deck and I would honestly suggest taking out a serrated bone knife in order to make that happen. But in case you guys aren't familiar with the mulligan, uh, you don't want a mulligan for any of these cards. Let's go ahead and find the good mulligan cards. Okay, so we got one of the cards that we always keep. You always keep Potion Belt in order to make the null zero mana. Pretty sure a lot of people are already familiar with that interaction. And we're fighting an aggro deck, so this is probably one of the best matchups we could hope for. Okay, well, the, bar the cards that you always keep in the mulligan are Potion Belt, our uh, Sinstone Graveyard, as well as uh, your Wild Pawn Nulls. You definitely want to keep those, and especially in matchups like this. I'm actually kind of surprised to see an aggro druid right now. Like, this is like the worst time to be playing aggro druid because of how good rogue is. Okay, so we can do this. We can discount our nulls to zero, and then we can start to set up for the future turns. We'll deal three because it kills something. And I don't want to deal six, so I think we're just going to take the draw two. We'll just play this next turn, draw two, deal three. Maybe set up a uh, potential for or combos. But yeah, with the concoction, the, the only options you really want to choose are like damage, draw, and destroy. You can sometimes pick the uh, add, add a minion to your hand or add a um, add a card to your hand. I'm sorry, add, add a minion to the field or add, add a uh, card to your hand. But those are usually the worst ones to get. Sometimes you can get them in like a pinch. But overall, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so what am I doing here? I can honestly play these uh, these six drops. And then I have Edwin as refill. I think that's not a bad idea. I also could just do this and wait. But I also like the idea of trying to get out the six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do I have the mana for that? One. I do have the mana for that. So we should probably move and see what happens. Because I could get nulls. Okay, there's a null. I'm gonna hold on to Shadow Step. It's not like I can get Astalor value anyway this turn. 
But yeah, we just take over the board this way. I could honestly shadow step this back, but I feel like I could either do one of two things. I can get double Astalor, or I could go with the Edwin. I'm probably gonna go with double Astalor though. Just because it's more uh it's more minions and we literally like, this is the reason why this deck is so OP is because we could do Astalor and a Shadow Step. Rogue is just breaking cards yet again because Shadow Step's broken. Uh this is fine. Yeah, this is absolutely fine. I could even like kill that with the Astalor. Because this isn't going to get buffed. This isn't undead, right? Oh, this is undead. Okay, never mind. It's fine. So we will boop into... Boop, boop. Completely take him off the board. Because now that we have the Astalor, if he doesn't have minions, he just can't win. So we, it's not even like a fact of like over trading. It's just there's the, there's literally no way he can win if we keep doing this. Welcome to the aggro druid meta. This is this is not a good time to play it because rogue is dominant. I can see. Yeah, that's about that's about how I'd expect he'd feel. <laughs> All right, let's see how many wins I can get with this uh, this deck. My goal is to try and get three more wins in a row. So you know, a good solid four one. Right now, I'm 3-1 with this deck in testing, so it's it's working pretty well. We lost to a quest hunter. Um, okay, I'm actually going to keep everything. And I know I don't like keeping the bone spike, but you could definitely, you know, trade Cutlass into a one-mana bone spike as a possibility. I like that a lot. If it hits Potion Belt, then oh well. Okay, so he's playing Guild Trader version. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that you definitely keep Cutlass in Mulligan. Cutlass, Sinstone, Graveyard, Potion Belt, and Wild Paul Null. Those are like the best cards to keep. I only kept this because I can do some pretty disgusting things with it later. Um, I think it's just still time to do this. Okay, so now this is where, you know, you can kind of flex one of the, uh, the unfavorable concoctions. I think I'm going to try and get more cards. And I'm definitely just going to pick damage so that way I can get rid of this. So next turn I can deal three. Or play Sinstone. Maybe it is just Sinstone. But I also don't want him to get too much chip damage. Oh my. Alright, I think we're just going to play double Sinstone next turn. But I really am hoping for a Null. Something that I can play in Shadow Step. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to set it up. I can't let him continue to hit me like this. This is, this is where we start to lose. Potion belt number two. Okay. Do this into this into one mana concoction. And I can coin out the sinstone if I need it. Ooh. Yo, give me wild paw null. I mean. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So we'll make the big minions. We'll, we'll, we'll pressure them now. I, dude, like, if we had a null, we would have been able to give these plus three, plus three. It's amazing how important the null can be. But I guess we'll just do it with this. But now I'm kind of worried about playing into, like, uh, Frostworm Fury. This might, this might be one of the, like, this is, this is how you can lose in this matchup. Like, this is, this is one way to lose, unfortunately. Like, Frostworm really goes a wrong way. draw four. If I play this now, it'll make this easier, and if I trade the cutlasses, it'll only hit Gone Fishing, right? Pretty sure that's how this interaction works. Let's test it. Nice. Okay, so that's 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 a nice thing to know. But am I, am I just about to get Frostworm Furied here, though? That's my biggest worry. I'm just gonna force him to deal with me, because if he doesn't freeze, then these are gonna start hitting him. Granted, he does just have nine damage. This actually might have been a mistake. This actually might have been a mistake. Yeah, I think I actually just got myself killed. Yeah, this was a mistake. Also, yeah, six mana. No? Well, I guess it was good to figure this out for science, but I didn't need to go and kill myself to have it happen. Wait, what? Why did he... Or oh, he's BMing me. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. 
Yeah, this is this is how we lose. We just let him hit us in the face all too much. I think I got greedy with the double sinstone. I think if I just went with one, that would have been much better. So let's 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 make let's make this uh let's round this out. That's how you, that's how you not play the deck. So let's uh, keep learning how to play the deck properly. Okay, demon hunter matchup. Let's see if this is actually a demon hunter though, since he's not golden. Okay, part of me wants to keep the Astalor just so that way I don't top deck it, but that's just a bad, a bad idea. Like, Astalor is the only neutral card, so if you draw it after your mulligan, it doesn't count towards your nulls, which sometimes can suck. Alright, well, we're just, we're just gonna chill, though. Double Ghost Strike is pretty good, though. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a Demon Hunter, like I thought. You have some mulligan far left card. Blessings to you. Yeah, it doesn't have his potion belt, it looks like. Oh, but there's <laughs> there's the Astalor I was talking about. Now that we drew it, that's one less buff. Wait, so now my nulls are at uh, still three mana. Jeez, that's so bad. Just top deck potion belt so I don't have to think about it. Yeah, like kind of like that. Kind of like that, except more in my hand instead of my opponent's hand. Rip. Like, I'm not doing anything is the issue, but it's like, part of me just wants to, like, Astalor into Ghostly Strike. Honestly, that might be the that might be the way. I Astalor into Ghostly Strike and then Shadow Step it. Our gift of the because this will give us our fifth card. Well, actually, it's our fourth card, so our Nulls are still going to be, are still going to cost a little bit of mana. Shadow Step on Edwin isn't nearly as important. I think we're just gonna go ahead and just do this in order to throw out the card. All right, we'll chill. Now we just have a bunch of zero mana interactions in, in case we top deck the uh, the Sin Stone. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that usage. Isn't it just better to save that for when like you double up a concoction you want to cast twice? That's usually how I approach that. I don't know if mixing another concoction was the way to go. I mean, like, if he's if he wants to play around Sinstone Graveyard, getting the Destroy uh, Concoction is really good. And that's usually how you want to play around the Rogue Mirror. So it's about making, you know, their turns awkward, but oh my god. Sometimes just going all in on your Sinstone is not the way to go. Sometimes you kind of have to do it because you have no other option, but... Always be trying to find Concoctions that will, like, screw up your opponent as well. It's not just about your tempo. Drawing two... Okay, here's an idea. I can I can play Edwin. I am kind of playing a lot of cards here, but at least I get to draw. And I might be able to go wide with this board here. I mean, do I, I don't know if I want to go that wide in all honesty. I think I'm just going to keep playing the cards when I get off the top. Oh, oh, never lackey. Okay, deal six. Draw two. I don't think I want to play the the stenographer. Cause like if I play it now, he's just gonna he's just gonna play his cards against me. Like I need my rushers to go into his cards. Granted, this turn probably could have been a little bit better, but at least Edwin was able to get us some much needed card draw. I don't know. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage, but I played Astalor twice. What's going on here? Destroy a minion. Oh boy. It's only something a 4-4, four four, though. It's not that bad. Concoctor. I mean, we Sinstone into draw 2, I think. Or I guess we draw 2 first. But it really sucks that I, just, I, I can't really do much about this right now. 1, 2, 3, 4. This will become 2 mana. Yeah, like the difference between your nulls being 0 and 1, dude. Massive difference, and it's like, I actually could have kept Astlor in my hand. There might have been an argument for it. This guy's just kind of doing exactly what I want to do. I just don't have my uh, my tempo in the right way. Like, I can't summon minions and, and stick them. Okay, so now I might be able to, to do something here. 
Deal six to this. Symptoms will be severe. I think I'm gonna summon a random three. Or is dealing six just better? Deal six to this. Where are these trades going, I guess, is the better question. This can go here, this can go here. I feel like I wanna just summon another minion. Trade here, trade here, play this, trade into here, or value trade into here. I think I'm gonna save this for like actual lethal. Maybe these trades could have been a little better by valuing the HP on this into the 2-2 and then hitting this into this. That actually might have been a little bit better. Take two and call you okay, money. this is a problem. Oh man, don't get destroy a minion. 20%, don't get destroy a minion. That's all I really need to avoid here is destroy minion. Deal three, destroy minion is just, is just detrimental. And there's no way to play around it. I made the bigger minion, but that doesn't that isn't what matters in this matchup. <laughs> oh man. I mean, he's just gonna make another bigger minion. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, he He didn't he didn't hit it. He didn't hit the location. Really now, you didn't hit the location. Freaking how? How did you allow this to happen? Like how did you <laughs> Oh, I I not <laughs> Now he's making me screw up. God damn it. Ah, uh, it's too it's too late for this, man. It is too late for this, and I'm probably still gonna lose. I mean, I got double Astalor though. Is that gonna be good enough? He's just gonna summon another board. Right? Oh, well, that's kind of annoying. Wait, that's super annoying. What the hell? <laughs> Tell me I have to use my mixed concoction into that? I don't wanna waste that. Hit this, summon this. I've got double Astalor these next couple turns. Oh my god. Dude, the power of concoctions versus no concoctions. He's just had all the random. Okay. Oh my lord. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of the power of concoctions. I just... Ugh, I'm not going to be able to stop this, am I? Kill this in order to prevent less damage to the technically seven. Ten, fourteen. Maybe there's a chance. If he's really about to trade, then I m most certainly have a chance. Like, I would have to get like potion belt or something. Oh, damn it. That's gonna do it. That's gonna do me over. Yeah, I definitely don't think Crab is supposed to be played in this deck. I would not suggest Krabatoa. This is, uh... <laughs> it is not the reason why he's winning this game here. Is there, like, anything random that I can you find? Can like, if I hit, like, Potion Belt or something into, like, Discover a card? Well, it doesn't look like we're gonna find out. I mean, we lost a Concoction, Rogue. Again, like, I, I think the only card that I wouldn't include is the Krapatoa. But this is just what happens when one player gets the Concoction and another player doesn't. So it's like, really make sure that you milk your, your Pugicide for as much value as you can. That's like what I'm going to try and tie this game with. Make sure you use Pugicide for value because if you don't get the Concoction value sometimes, it'll cost you. Alright, I gotta get, I gotta, I gotta get two more. I got alright, two, two more games, there'll be wins. Alright, trust me. There'll be wins.
So here we go. This is looking much better since I actually have the potion belt. Should I keep Astalor though? You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for science. I don't think you're supposed to do this. In fact, while I'm I'm doing this, I'm gonna look up the stats on keeping Astalor. Because I know that it's not very uh, very common. Okay, so what do the stats say about keeping Astalor? Astalor is kept 6% of the time. 6% of the time. Okay. Alright, so maybe we're not supposed to keep this card. Maybe we're not supposed to keep this card, even though it's the most powerful card in the deck. Or one of the most powerful cards in the deck, I should say. Wait, what? It, what? Oh my god, I'm just now realizing I'm fighting a Shadow Priest. Good, good. Okay. Um. I guess destroy a minion and deal damage. So we're gonna play this on three, and then we're gonna have big wombo combo. I mean, maybe I should have gone for some card draw. Destroy a minion card draw? Nah, we got Edwin as a refill. What are you gonna do? Give that reborn? Oh, he's silencing it. Okay. Wait, silence priest? Hello? Freaking. Alright, alright. So this is one of those situations where it's like, if he goes wide, this might backfire. Maybe it was technically the safest play in order to do this. But I definitely want to go for the value. Okay. So we have four mana that's for sure getting played here. So we have a little bit of flex here. Let's see if I can't find Shadow Step. Or Prep into Bone is also really good. I guess we should mix another potion before we see which one we're playing. So, nah, it has to be this. Draw cards. Draw cards. This could honestly find another shadow step, and I can I can get so greedy here, but it's it's not the right play. We just save it. We just save it for refill. Okay, so we kill this. Hopefully, this kills five five. And if it doesn't, then it's I guess kind of fine. Cause I have a big minion. Well, like, hold on a minute. Is he gonna be able to to? This is gonna hit me again? Oh no, don't tell me this is actually gonna cost me the game. Yeah, keeping Astalor was kind of a mistake. Because imagine if I was like able to play this instead. Alright, that is fine. But I'm still losing the board here. Okay, we find a Shadow Step. Kinda, I'm kind of scared to play Blackwater Cutlass on this thing. Because, like, I really don't want to be taking any unnecessary damage. And I'm still one more turn away from being able to get healed. But I think now we're going to be okay. This deck doesn't have too much, like, burst out of nowhere, right? I mean, it does have Void Shard, right? Come, yeah, Void Shard would be what I would have to worry about. But now I don't think it's a problem. Arcane Bolt. Oh, no, I really wish I would have had this. I mean, I guess Bone Spike is still fine. It's not what I wanted to do, though. Hey, a little too late on that. Our gift of the arcane enlightens us. Just going for maximum stats. Yeah, I, I didn't think I was going to get anything out of it, but this is still going to win next turn, right? Just, just goes to show you how powerful Sinstone Graveyard is at 3 mana. How can he heal 10 for 7? Oh. Okay, he can apparently heal. Wait, is that enough? So I could do this and start, just start getting some random concoctions. It's probably the way to go. I mean, I could also gain armor, though. Gaining armor is still really good. We do this. Yeah, here's what we do. We do this, we kill it off. You see what we find. kind of cool. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way so I can gain life and hit him in the face. 
And we still get another concoction, but I don't really think that's that important. Right now, just keeping ourselves alive. I don't think he could deal 10 for 8, but you never know. Double Void Shard, that's only 8. Yeah, this is this is a concede play. I'm, I'm honestly surprised to see somebody playing Aggro Priest. Oh, hello. Wait a minute. No. Wait, whoa, what? This isn't gonna win, but goddamn, dude, like, <laughs> that's, that was impressive. That was, like, actually impressive. Okay, what the hell? Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and do this, see what we find. That's oh, a lightning bolt. We'll just go ahead and hold on to it, because I don't want to overload myself right now. I mean, it's, it's just free damage. We'll use it when we need it. Low-key might just play the Astalor. They need our care. There's nothing he can do here, man. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess, I guess this kind of makes sense with the with the card, with 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 that one card, you know. Oh my dear God! I think I'm just gonna do it this way. Let's see where these go. Okay, so it did it didn't end up killing it. <laughs> oh wait, there's the one one that I left up I left up. Ah, it's fine. One minion can live. We'll just kill him with Astalor next turn. Destroy random minion, get another card. You get the goods. I'll stand watch. Grab your shield. It's a riot. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'll give this deck A plus on creativity, but I mean, in this rogue meta, you cannot, you cannot play this. I'm sorry. Making sure that I don't have to take a 50-50. Technically, didn't need to attack with that, but we're gonna go ahead and just let our one drop get a little spotlight. <laughs> All right, this next game I think is winning in to top 1,000. Uh, I might miss it by like one or two ranks, and if that happens, we'll play one more game. Okay, so against a Death Knight, of course this would be my final boss, one of our worst, debatably one of our worst matchups. But yeah, we definitely don't want any of those cards. All right, let's see what we find. Draw two every single time. Don't even have to think about it. Like, drawing cards is just the best thing you can do if you learn anything from this video today. I mean, it's not that that wild of a, of a thing to put together. But, you know, drawing cards. Ooh boy, and Rogue. Who would have thought? I don't usually get really good cards that cost three less. Because it's literally anything. Dude. You can get anything from, like, a Batty Guest to a King Crush. Ooh, Crimson Sigil Runner. I mean, we should just play this now. Because I'm never going to get value out of it. But, like, this, this is my point, man. This is my point. You get anything from, like, you know, a 1-1 one -one to freaking, you know, win the game automatically. But it's like, I never get anything that decent out of it. I really don't like picking cost 3 less. It's, like, really, like, one of my last, uh, one of my last options that I choose. I don't mind this, actually. We do fill up our hand, technically, but I could throw out Maestra. Ooh. Okay, now this is a good example of a, of a random card to get that's very nice. You can't always trust what you see. If a minion died this turn... Okay, so even if his one, one of his minions dies, this for two mana is real good. I mean, think about it. Like, we play a null, we trade, and then we summon two more nulls. <laughs> we taunt. They just don't have charge, or they don't have rush. Okay, now I'm kind of hoping I find my Sin Stone instead. Because I have Prep into Bone. I can play it for one. Okay, so this is for sure happening. We'll take a look at the bottom, see what we find. We find the Sin Stone. Play this for one. I can actually play the... Can I play this? Or should I wait a turn? Yeah. I think I'd rather make a bigger minion. I'll see... 
there we go. So we did the thing before him. He has not gotten concoctions. Finally, we are the rogue that is knocking. Not getting high rolled while recording video. I mean, it's still it's still likely for us to get. Uh, I mean, not likely, but it's still possible for us to get high rolled. Like if he just hit a shadow step off of that, for example. He has Astalor. It's just insane what this deck can do, cause like it doesn't pay mana for anything. This is a desperation move. Right? Oh. Oh no, that's bad. It's actually kind of annoying how it doesn't tell you the extra copy of the shadow was uh was made by Dora Shadows. Oh my god. It, it, he's rolling the nuts, just whether or not he has time to do everything. Oh, this one a real big minion. I need to find destroy. Don't tell me this guy's about to high roll me. I'm getting high rolled, aren't I? Jeez, man. <laughs> well, this did not pan out the way I thought it would. I can trade. I think I'm going to do this first, see what I find. Okay, so we know the cards at the bottom are Null and Scribbler. What if we... Maybe we should have waited a turn. Maybe that was the plan. But if I wait a turn, then I can't kill the 14-14. Like, I need a uh, freaking... I need a concoction. That's what I need. Jeez. I need to find a concoction. Okay, destroy random. I need it. Okay, so we did find it. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Wait. Oh my god. My opponent gets to like do this like a balls to the walls nutty move. And then oh my god. This is this is the thing about rogue mirrors. Like they're frustrating, but they're really interesting to analyze. Cause like I could have waited a turn and I could have done like a big combo there, maybe removed his stuff while also summoning a ghost myself. Or, you know, sometimes you just get really lucky with the direction that it goes. Sometimes that just happens. Okay, that's the last copy of Shadow Step, yeah? No? Wait, this was generated from what? Or is Deck Tracker not... Deck Tracker's not keeping a, a, an eye on this properly. Saying it has a random Shadow Step. I mean, he doesn't have the other Sin Stone. He's just playing cards. Oh my... What? <laughs> okay, man. I need you to... I need you to chill it out, okay? I need you to, ch to just chill a little bit, okay? So these attack other minions, right? Yeah, cannot be reduced below one. They attack a random enemy minion. So as long as this doesn't hit here, it's fine. Never, never lackey, dude. Never lackey. What the hell? Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine because at least we have our minions. And we get to summon these and we get to summon this. We got all the, all the ghosts and... and <laughs> All the ghosts chilling. Okay, so he gets to play his 5-5 five, five Astalor, which puts him at 24. I can do this into this. I don't think I care too much about the 5-5 five, five surviving, but I kind of like the idea of being able to trade into it. And there's... Ugh. This guy just has everything. I have not gotten any of my Shadow Steps, by the way. I feel like that's super important to note. I have not gotten a single Shadow Step. A 
11, 14. You can try to put him at an uncomfortable number. I gotta find the other sin stone, so I might be able to go in here and just f hide behind the uh, the stealth, but I have to get lucky. Destroy random. Draw two. So now Sinstone isn't going to do anything. But at least I'm killing stuff. Just going to go here. Okay, so now I can just Shadow Step the Astalor instead. So we'll ship everything to the face. We'll save this for next turn if we need it. It's a 50-50 on Cutlass or um, Sinstone. Or I guess it's probably more likely for it to be Sinstone, because Cutlass could be anywhere in the deck. Cutlass could technically be up bottom. This is super close. I don't know who's got this. I mean, is this just really going to come down to who plays Astalor first? Oh, boy. Okay, there's Sinstone. It's a little bit awkward, because I would need to Shadow Step this back in order to get the value. And I don't think we want to do that. Last cards are Edwin and Stenographer. Yeah, I think if anything, we just kind of have to go face here, yeah? Oh, here if we, we do need to Shadow Step the Astalor, we can technically do that. Or maybe I could like Shadow Step, um... I don't think I could Shadow Step anything else, actually. I could Shadow Step the, the Stealth Minions, maybe? Because I am playing mine first. It just really depends on if he destroys my minions here. Notice how many like destroy cards he got, man. It got so many of them. Again! Oh, <laughs> I mean, hold on a minute. He still doesn't have enough HP on the board to survive. Did I hit, did I do enough face damage? Three mana left. And I've still got eight attack on the field. I don't think he's got another concoction, right? Does have another mi Oh wait, no, this is drawn by the concoctions. Yeah, I don't think he's got it. Shadow stepping this. Puts him at 16. Our gift of frost us. Doesn't look like he even got the attack off. Oh, Woo! That was a close game. Alright, alright, top 1,000. Top 1,000 so I don't have to do another game. Ah, fine. Fine, one more. Oh, <laughs> now this is a mulligan. There might have even been an argument to say to keep the ghostly strike, just to keep the train of card draw going after we uh we go for Sinstone. This is probably gonna be like the easiest game we ever play, depending on what our opponent's playing. They're actually playing Hunter? Okay, yeah. We're, we're, we're cruising into top 1,000. I, I, I think this is uh, the easiest cruise of our life. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Hold up a minute. He's playing Spit Hunter. This is actually not... I mean, it's not the worst, but... Oh. Never mind. Okay, hold on. I think, I think we're good. I think we're, like, good, dude. I think we're, like, absolutely fine no matter what we do now. Okay, so Sinstone into Sinstone into Unga Bunga on five. There's no way he kills us by six. Wait, can I Unga Bunga on turn... Can I Unga Bunga a turn sooner? Now, do I play Null or no? This deck doesn't have that much buff, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit it. I'll save it for next turn, depending on what I draw. Oh my god. Okay, so we null. Hit here. Coin. Play this. 
Heal three, draw two, hopefully draw a spell. We drew a spell. Do this. Okay, so we unga bunga on turn four. Ah! <laughs> uh, why is this a thing still? I thought we nerfed this! <laughs> thought we nerfed this, dude. This is the whole reason why we don't want rogues to scam games. Because they could. Oh my god, this guy's got a turn 5 hide bullet on. And it's. Wait, hold on. Is this. Wait, is this better? Wait, hold on a minute. No, no, it's not better. Definitely not. Okay, never mind. 20, uh, 22, 26 technically. So I need to, I need to kill this. <laughs> but good luck trying to kill me. Cause now you need to kill the 10 and the nine. <laughs> like I said, easiest top 1000 ever. Easiest top 1,000 ever. There's no way that we lose this, right? Oh! Whoa! Oh, fuck. That's actually huge. Dude, no. Dude, no way. Oh, my. Okay, Edwin, don't fail me now. Good. <laughs> there we go. Good, Edwin. Okay. Okay. Keep it going. Uh. Shit. Keep it going. Ah. Kind of wish I drew that instead. Well, honestly, like hitting, killing his stuff doesn't even make that much of a difference. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. That Edwin turn was so crucial. I don't think we lose to Shock Spitter in any way. There's no way to lose to Shock Spitter, right? Hitting these is just not not a good idea. Like, even if he's got, like, Shock Spitter into freaking uh, whatever. Into Devouring. There's no way that it works this turn. Right? No. No, no, no. Yeah, he's got five mana left. Doesn't matter. What are we doing? Okay, alright. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Dude, I get so freaking paranoid against this deck. Like, I knew that he couldn't double sh Shock Spitter, but I still felt like I was dying. That deck is- it always puts me in an, un in an unsafe mindset. Well, there you go. First time playing this deck, uh, or playing this variant of the deck. I mean, I've played a lot of this deck anyway, but in any case, like, 6-3. It, it's good. Not that surprising. Cock Rogue, really good. Like I said, you might be able to take out a Bone Spike for, like, a Vanessa if you want to try and tech for the Mirror. But there are some people that would just argue that you just should do what you're, uh, what you're naturally good at. Sometimes Vanessa can be good. But, uh, overall, Concoction Rogue is just definitely one of the most powerful decks you can play. I don't think that's that surprising.